Hello everyone, it's Glenda and welcome back to my channel Creative Grandma. Today's crochet tutorial is for the quick and easy hanging kitchen towel. This is a great pattern if you're looking for something that's very quick, very easy, and you like to do those craft shows or you just like to make something to brighten up your kitchen for the spring summer season. Now this pattern is specifically geared for the Lion brand 24-7 cotton and I'll get into that when I give you the material list. But first I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to measure it and show you the dimensions of what you're going to be making today. So the first dishcloth I have it folded so it's going to measure it measures roughly 11 and a half inches across and from the bottom to the top with the strap folded down it's going to measure approximately 16 inches long and if you unbutton the strap so if you measure from the very top of the strap before you fold it down and button it, it measures about 19 and a quarter inches. Now for this project, I don't think the gauge really matters. Now I have the gauge in the instructions if you want a copy of that PDF, but I don't think it's necessary. This is just a great pattern if you have some extra skeins of the Lion brand 24-7 laying around. You can make one dish towel out of one skein of yarn. So let's go over over all the materials and everything you need to know before you start your project. Now for this project you're going to need one skein of the Lion Brand Yarns 24-7 cotton yarn. This is a 4 medium worsted weight cotton. It comes in a 3.5 ounce 100 gram 186 yard 170 meter skein. This is a hundred percent mercerized cotton. It's machine wash and dryable. The yarn is made in Mexico. This yarn has beautiful stitch definition. So one skein of many of the beautiful colors they have to offer. And I'll have a link to this yarn in the description box. You can click that link and go right to Lion Brand Yarns and see all the beautiful colors. You're also going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need a size H8 or five millimeter crochet hook. You're going to need one button in whichever color matches your kitchen towel or whatever color you wish. So I'm using this darker yellow with my yellow and I'm using a dark pink with the pink so you can choose whatever button you want. Now this button is one and one fourth inches in diameter and then you're going to need a yarn needle. So one skein of yarn will make one kitchen towel. Now I have to be very clear. Now I did make this towel in a different cotton yarn and I had to use two skeins of a different brand. So with the Lion brand, you get one kitchen towel out of a skein. So if you're using a different brand, you may not have enough yarn to finish that kitchen towel. So keep that in mind when you're using a different product. Product. This is geared specifically for the 24-7 cotton. And if you look, this is a bigger skein than most of those other cotton skeins. So just wanted to point that out. So if you're using like Premier Home Cotton, then you need two skeins of that because there's less cotton uh, yarn in those skeins than in these uh, Lion Brand 24-7. So for today's video, I chose the yellow, so we're, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So grab whatever cotton yarn you're going to use, grab your size H8 5mm hook, and let's get started. So I have my yarn attached to my hook, and I just used a double knot. We're going to begin, and we're going to chain 44. Yarn over the hook, pull it through the loop on your hook, and that creates your first chain. Yarn over, pull through, that's two three, four, continue until you have a chain with 44 chains and I'll be back and we'll start row one. I have my chain with 44 chains and now we're going to begin row one. For row one we're going to skip the first three chain and we're going to start in the fourth chain from hook. So yarn over, skip one, two, three, insert into that fourth chain, 
work a double crochet. Yarn over, pull it through that chain. You have three loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. You just made a double crochet. Now this beginning chain three that you skipped will count as your first double crochet. So now for row one, all we're going to do is work one double crochet in each chain across to the end. Yarn over, insert into the next chain, work a double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next chain, work a double crochet. Very simple row. Let's do it one more time. Yarn over, insert into the next chain, work a double crochet. Continue and work one double crochet in each chain across to the very end and I'll meet you at the end of row one. I'm over at the end of row one. I worked one double crochet in each chain across starting into that fourth chain. So with counting your beginning chain three and all the double crochet across, you should have a total of 42 stitches counting that beginning chain three. So now I'm going to zoom up and we're going to start row two. So to begin, you're going to start in chain one turn your work. We're going to start and single crochet into the first stitch. You're going to skip that beginning chain one, insert into the top of that first stitch under the top two loops, work a single crochet. Yarn over, pull through that stitch. You have two loops, yarn over and pull through. You just worked a single crochet. Now to work across the row, we're going to work a cross single crochet, which requires two stitches. We're going to skip the first stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, and then come back and single crochet into the previously skipped stitch. So let's begin and we're going to repeat this across. So this is the start of the repeat. Skip the next double crochet stitch, Insert into the next stitch going under both of those top loops. Work a single crochet. You're going to come back, just bring your hook back. You're going to insert from front to back through that previously skipped stitch. Work a single crochet. Yarn over, pull through that stitch. Pull up a loop yarn over and pull through two loops. You just made your cross single crochet and we're going to repeat that across. So this is the end of the repeat. So let's do that a couple more times. You're going to skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Take your hook, bring it back to the front of your work and insert from front to back in the top of that previously skipped stitch work a single crochet. Your cross single crochet is made. So let's do it again. This is the start of the repeat. Skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Bring your hook back around to the front, insert from front to back under those top two loops of that previously skipped stitch, work a single crochet and that is the end of the repeat. So go ahead and work that repeat across. You're going to skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next, and then come back and single crochet into that skip stitch. You're going to work that across your work until you get to the ending chain. So work your last cross single crochet into those last two double crochet and then you're going to stop here at this ending turning chain and I'll meet you there. I'm over at the end of row two. I still have my turning chain here. This is what your work should look like. You have your um, beginning single crochet and then you work cross single crochet across to the end of the row and now we're over here at our ending turning chain. 
We're going to end row two by counting up one, two, three, or you're just going into that very next chain right beside that last double crochet stitch. You're going to insert into the top of that chain and work a single crochet to finish row two. And that is what your work should look like. So row two is finished and now we're going to start row three. To begin row three, we're going to start with the chain two. One, two. You're going to turn your work. Your beginning chain two is going to count as your first double crochet stitch. So when you're working this pattern, this chain two acts as the first stitch. So you're going to skip this stitch when you start your work. We're going to work one double crochet in each stitch across. Yarn over, you're skipping that beginning chain two, you're skipping that first stitch, and you're going into the next stitch. Under the top two loops, work a double crochet. Yarn over, insert under the top two loops of the next stitch, work a double crochet. And we're just going to continue across the row. Yarn over, insert into the top of the next stitch, and you're going right under the top two loops only. Work a double crochet. So go ahead and continue and work one double crochet in each stitch across to the very end of the row, and I'll meet you at the end of row three. I'm over at the end of row three. This is what your work should look like. You should have one double crochet in each stitch across, and you should have a total of 42 double crochet, and that includes counting your beginning chain two as a double crochet stitch. So now to continue with the pattern, we're just going to repeat rows two and row three 13 more times, which when you do that, you'll be at the end of row 29. So go ahead and repeat rows 2 and row 3 13 more times. I'll meet you at the end of row 29. So if you need help, just click back on the video and you can start where I started with row 2, work to the end of row 3, and do that 13 times. I'll be back at the end of row 29. I'm over at the end of row 29. This is what your dish towel should look like. You can see how we're repeating rows two, row three, row two, row three, over and over again. So we're at the end of row 29 and you should have ended with that double crochet row. So now we're getting ready to start row 30, which row 30 will be where we're going to start decreasing stitches and forming the top and the strap. So to start row 30, we're going to begin with the chain one. You're going to turn your work, and now we're going to work a single crochet two together, and that's where we're going to decrease one stitch over the next two stitches. So you're going to skip the beginning chain one, insert into the very first stitch, and we're working under both of those top loops. Yarn over and pull through. Keep that loop on your hook. Insert into the top of the next stitch, yarn over, and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull through all three loops. You just single crocheted two together, decreasing by one stitch. And we're going to repeat that across the entire row. So let's do it again. You're going to insert into the top of the next stitch, Yarn over and pull through. Keep that loop on your hook. Insert under the top two loops of the next stitch. Yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. You just single crocheted two together and you decrease by one stitch. And that is the end of the repeat. So let's do it again. This is the start of the repeat. Insert into the top of the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Insert into the top of the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. 
you single crochet two together, you decrease by one stitch, and that is the end of the repeat. So I'll show you one more time and then you can continue on your own across the row. Insert into the top of the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Insert into the top of the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Your single crochet two together is made, you decrease by one stitch, and that is the end of the repeat. So go ahead and click back on the video if you need help. You're going to single crochet two together over the next two stitches, and you're going to decrease by one stitch, and you're going to repeat that to the end of the row. Again, if you need help, just click back on the video, follow that technique from the start to the finish, and then I'll meet you at the end of row 30. I'm over at the end of row 30 and I stop because we have our ending turning chain and we have a double crochet. So I always like to show how I end a row. You're going to insert into the top of that next double crochet stitch, yarn over and pull through. Now you have your ending chain two. You're going to count up one, two or go right into the very next chain yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. So row 30 is finished. This is what your work should look like and you should now have a total of 21 stitches across your work. So you can just count at the top of each stitch and you should have 21 stitches. So now we're going to go ahead and start row 31. We're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. We're going to continue and work single crochet two together across until we get to the last stitch. You're going to skip that chain one, insert under the top two loops of that first stitch, yarn over and pull through. You keep your loop on the hook. Insert into the next stitch under the top two loops yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. You just single crochet two together and you decrease by one stitch, same as the row before. So let's do it again. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. I'll show you one more time. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. Continue and work single crochet two together until you get over to your last stitch here and I'll meet you there and show you how to finish the row. I'm over at the end of row 31. This is how it looks. It's starting to gather together and so far you should have 10 stitches across your work. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and we have one stitch to go. We have that last single crochet. You're going to insert under the top two loops of that stitch and work one single crochet. So now you should have a total of 11 stitches across the top of your tail. Now we're going to begin row 32. We're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. We're going to skip that beginning chain one, insert under the top two loops of that first stitch and our stitches have big openings so you should be able to find them very easily. So insert under the top two loops of that first stitch and work one single crochet. Now we're going to single crochet two together, insert under the top two loops of that next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Insert under the top two loops of that next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Now we're going to work one single crochet in each of the next five stitches. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. That's one. 
insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet, that's two, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet, that's three, insert into the next stitch, single crochet, that's four, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet, and that's five. Now we're going to single crochet two together, insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through, keeping that loop on the hook. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. We have one stitch remaining, so you just turn your work and you can see the top of that stitch. You're going to insert into that end stitch, the very last stitch, work one single crochet. So now when you look at your work, you should have a total of nine single crochet. And it's easier to count them by looking at the top of your stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So now we're going to start row 33. We're going to begin by chaining one. You're going to turn your work. We're going to skip that first chain insert under the top two loops of the very first stitch, work a single crochet. We're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across. Insert into the next stitch, single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, single crochet. And continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across. So I'm just going to go ahead and work it right with you. We're almost over to the end. You're going to have nine stitches across your work. I'm over to the end and it might be confusing. So when you're looking at it this way, turn your work towards you so you can see the top of that stitch. Insert into that last stitch, work a single crochet and you should have nine single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So now for rows 34 through 53, you're going to repeat chain one and then single crochet in each stitch across. So go ahead and if you need help, click back on the video to where we just started row 33 and repeat until you get to row 53. So you might want to put a stitch marker here in this first row that we just did. You finished it, put a stitch marker in here. You'll know that's row 33 and then you continue until you get to row 53. You're working straight nine stitches across until you get to row 53. I'll meet you at the end of row 53. I'm over at the end of row 53. I marked row 33 and then I worked even nine stitches across until I got to the end of row 53. So if you start at your marker and count up to 53. So now we're getting ready to start row 54 and this is where we're going to make our buttonhole. We're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. We're going to skip that beginning chain one Insert your hook under the top two loops of that very first stitch, work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. So you should have three single crochets so far across your row. We're going to chain three, one, two and three and then we're going to skip three stitches one two three insert into the next stitch work a single crochet insert into the next stitch work a single crochet insert into the last stitch and work a single crochet so now when you look at your work, you should have three single crochet, a chain three, 
you skip three stitches and then three single crochet to end the row. Now we're ready to begin row 55. We're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip that beginning chain one, insert into the top of that first stitch under the top two loops, work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch and we're always going under the top two loops, work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Now we're going to work three single crochet across that chain three space going underneath and around the chain. Insert underneath the chain three, work a single crochet, that's one. Insert underneath the chain, work a single crochet, that's two. Insert underneath the chain, work a single crochet, and that's three. You're going to work one single crochet in each of the last three stitches. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Insert into the last stitch, work a single crochet. Row 55 is finished and you should have a total of nine single crochet across your work. So we have one more row to go. Now we're ready to begin row 56. We're going to chain one, turn your work, and we're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across. Skip that beginning chain one, insert into the first stitch, work a single crochet. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. I'm just going to work right along with you and we're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across. When you get to the end of the row you should have a total of nine single crochet stitches. One stitch to go. And when you look at your work, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine single crochet across. So now it's up to you whether you want to put a finishing border around your towel. I just think it adds a nice look. You don't have to. It's up to you. But now I'm going to go ahead and work one round of border completely around my towel. So let's begin our border. We're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. We're going to skip the chain one, insert into that very first stitch, work a single crochet. Now we're going to single crochet two together, insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. We're going to work one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. That's one. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. That's two. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. And that's three. Now we're going to single crochet two together, insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. We have one stitch left on the top of our handle strap, insert into that last stitch, work a single crochet. So the top of our strap is finished and you should have seven single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So now we're going to chain one to form our corner and now we're getting ready to work down the length of our strap and then down the side of our towel. We're going to single crochet in each of the next 27 single crochet rows. 
So you're going right into the same space as the base of that last stitch worked. You're going right into that first row end stitch. So make sure you're not going into the side of the single crochet. You're going down here to where the base of that stitch is right here in that first single crochet row. So insert into that first row end stitch, work a single crochet. That's one. Insert into the next row end stitch, work a single crochet. That's two. Insert into the next row end stitch, just follow those stitches down, insert, work a single crochet, and that's three. You need to do that 24 more times, so go ahead and work a single crochet in each of the next 24 row end stitches, and then I'll meet you there. I just worked one single crochet in each of the next 27 row end stitches down. So if you're not sure, then go back to where you chained one at the corner and then count until you have 27 single crochet down your strap and right at the top edge. You just go around that curve. So that's what it should look like. So now we're going to start and work down the side of our towel. We're going to work half double crochets now. We're going to work two half double crochets into the double crochet row end stitch and one half double crochet into the single crochet row end stitch. So let's begin. You're going to yarn over, insert into that next double crochet row end stitch, yarn over, pull back through and around the post of that stitch. You have three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three loops. You just made a half double crochet. I'll show you one more time. Yarn over, insert underneath and around the post of that same stitch. Yarn over, pull back through that stitch. You have three loops. Yarn over and pull through two loops. You just made a half double crochet and you should have two half double crochets in that double crochet row end stitch. So now we're going to start our repeat. You're going to yarn over, insert into that next single crochet row end stitch, just follow it right down, insert into that row end stitch, work one half double crochet. Now we have our double crochet row end stitch and we're going to work two half double crochet underneath and around the post of that next row end stitch. Yarn over, insert underneath and around that double crochet row end stitch and work two half double crochet. One and two. And that is the end of the repeat. So I'll show you one more time. You're going to yarn over, insert into the next single crochet row end stitch and work one half double crochet. Yarn over, insert underneath and around the post of the next double crochet row end stitch and work two half double crochet. One and two. And that is the end of the repeat. I'll show you one more time. Yarn over, insert into that next single crochet row end stitch and work one half double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next double crochet row end stitch and work two half double crochet. One and two. And that is the end of the repeat. So go ahead and repeat one half double crochet into the next single crochet row end stitch and two half double crochet into the next double crochet row end stitch. Repeat that down to the corner. You'll end with two half double crochet into that last row end stitch. I'll meet you there and we'll continue. I just worked down my towel. This is what it looks like and you should be at the next corner and you should have ended with two half double crochet into that last row end stitch. So now we're getting ready to work across the bottom of our foundation chain. So we're going to chain one for the corner and now we're going to work one half double crochet in each chain across or you can go right at the base of each one of those double crochets to find your chain. 
So let's begin. Yarn over, insert into that very first chain and follow that end stitch down. You worked over the end stitch, so you're going to follow right at the base of those stitches and go right into that first chain. Work a half double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next chain, and I just follow my stitch down and go right into the chain at the base of that stitch. Work a half double crochet. Yarn over, insert into the next chain, work a half double crochet. So go ahead and work one half double crochet in each chain across to the next corner, and I'll meet you there. So I'm over at the corner. I just worked one half double crochet in each stitch across and now I'm over to the corner. Now when you look at your work you'll notice I did a half double crochet into the last half double crochet stitch but if you look at your work you still have this ending chain right here. So you have your last double crochet and then you have your turning chain here. So we're going to go right into the chain on the other side of that last double crochet. So yarn over, insert into that end chain, work a half double crochet. So now the bottom of your dish towel has the border on it. We're over at the corner, so we're going to go ahead and chain one, and then you're just going to turn your work so you can work down the length and we're going to be working in the row end stitches just like we did on the other side. So now we're ready to work down the length. So we're going to go ahead and start and work two half double crochet into this first double crochet row end stitch. Yarn over, insert into that double crochet row end stitch. You're going underneath and around the post of that end stitch. Work two half double crochet. One and two, all in that same space. So now we're getting ready to do our repeat. We're going to work one half double crochet into this next single crochet row and stitch, and two half double crochet into the double crochet row and stitch, and we're going to do that a total of 14 times down the length. So let's begin. Yarn over, insert into that single crochet row end stitch, work one half double crochet. Again, this is the start of the repeat. Now we're going to work two half double crochet into the next double crochet row end stitch. Yarn over, insert underneath and around the post of that next row end stitch, and work two half double crochet. One and two and that is one of 14. So let's do it again. Yarn over, insert into that next row end stitch, work one half double crochet. Again, that's the start of the repeat. Yarn over, insert into the next double crochet row end stitch, going underneath and around the post of that stitch, and work two half double crochet. One and two and that's two repeats out of 14. So I'm going to do it one more time. Yarn over, insert into the single crochet row end stitch, work one half double crochet. Yarn over, insert underneath and around that double crochet row end stitch in the next row, and work two half double crochet. One and two and that is three repeats out of 14. So go ahead and work one half double crochet into the next row end stitch, two half double crochet into the next row end stitch, and you need to do that 11 more times, and I'll meet you after I do my next 11 repeats. I just worked my remaining repeats down the length of our towel, and when you look at your work, you should be right near the tip of the corner here on that curve. 
So when you get up close and you look at your work, you'll notice you ended your repeat with two half double crochet into that last double crochet row end stitch. So now when you're at the curve, these are the single crochet row end stitches. So let's go ahead and finish our border. We're going to finish our border with working one single crochet in each remaining single crochet row end stitch. So let's begin. Insert your hook into the next row end stitch. Work a single crochet. Insert into the next row end stitch. Work a single crochet. Insert into the next row end stitch. Work a single crochet and continue working one single crochet in each row end stitch until you get to the corner. Now remember when you get to the corner your last stitch will be made right at the base of that beginning single crochet of the round. You'll be working right underneath that stitch. So go ahead work one single crochet in each row end stitch down the remaining part of your strap and I'll meet you at the corner. I just worked one single crochet in each row end stitch down to the corner and you should work your last single crochet right at the base of that beginning single crochet stitch. So now we need to form our corner and chain one and then we're going to join with the slip stitch under the top two loops of that first beginning single crochet. Insert underneath the top two loops of that stitch and slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. We're going to fasten off, and I chain two. You can use whichever method you prefer, and then I just pull down, and it creates a secure knot. Now I'll be weaving this in on the back of my work. So the only thing we have to do yet is take a length of yarn. Now I'm I'm just going to do a little bit longer than normal because I rather have too much than not enough. So take a strand of yarn at least 12 inches or longer, thread your needle. So what you're going to do is you're just going to fold this. It's already right side facing once you fasten off. So you're going to take this and you're going to fold it down. So what you want to do, make sure it's nice and straight, and then put your button and center it right in the middle of where the buttonhole goes. So once you know where your button goes, then just pull that back, and then I come up through the back with my needle, and I'm just going to sew my button on. And then I just tie a knot in the back and then I weave in my ends. So I'm going to go ahead and sew my button on and then I'll be back and show you the finished dish towel. So I come back because I sewed my button on but if you've never weaved in your ends before what you want to do is take your needle and go on the back of your work and I'm just coming right up here underneath these stitches bringing my hook over and through those stitches and then I pull my yarn through and then I like to go back through a second time and go across and then when I have enough yarn I really like to come back a third time because it really helps secure those ends in because you don't want your ends coming out so that's what I do and then I just clip it close to my work I'm going to go ahead and finish weaving in my ends and then I'll come back and show you the finished towel. Our dish towel is finished. This is what it should look like. Now I have my sides folded in for when I hang them. I like those sides to be in. But this is what we made. A nice size dish towel with the hanging strap and just has that really quick and easy button closure. You just put it over the handle of your stove or your cupboard and then just button close it and then I like to fold in my sides and hang it but very nice quick and easy pattern if you're looking for some craft show favorites these are beautiful because Lion Brand has so many gorgeous colors available in the Lion Brand 24-7 cotton yarn and I'll have a special link in the video in the description box that you can click that link and go right to the Lion Brand website thank you everybody for stopping by today I hope you enjoyed making your quick and easy hanging kit 
kitchen towel. And until next time, stay inspired and happy crocheting.